it is official. Jim Harbaugh, all jokes aside, is the Chargers head coach. Initially, what were your first thoughts? And then what was your reaction to everyone like just penciling them in? Okay, yep, Super Bowl lock. So initially when they hired Jim Harbaugh, I'm like, good, finally. Finally, spending money on a head coach who's going to turn around your franchise. And I do think he will turn around the Chargers. But you mentioned the division that they're in, and you mentioned some things that Justin Herbert as a player has to develop into being more of a leader and being more um, fit here. I look at the Chargers and I see that they have contracts looming, big contracts, whether it's Khalil Mack's contract, whether it's Sebastian Joseph Day, whether it's still paying JC Jackson, whether it's Keenan Allen, who's getting old, Mike Williams, who's always hurt. There's a lot of question marks here. And it went initially from that's good for the Chargers. That's good for Justin Herbert and Jim Harbaugh to Okay, is this the new Bills? Is this what they're going to be? Are they breaking up with the Bills now? Are the yeah. Bills going to be overlooked now? And now the Chargers are going to be their new favorite toy. Because we saw this happen before with the Ravens initially, and then with the Bills, and now we're going to have the Chargers as the new shiny toy. Because they have Jim Harbaugh there. We know how great of a coach he is, and he was successful in the NFL too. It feels to me like this is basically going to be their new Bills, where they're overhyping the Bills all season long. And they're going to be glazing them. Justin Herbert, so good. I do think Justin Herbert will have a good season next year. But they have a lot of holes they have to address. They need to have receivers who can run and have speed because Quentin Johnson can't catch for some reason. Keenan Allen is in his 30s. Mike Williams has the body of a 35-year-old at this point. There's a lot of things they got to fix. So before I can anoint them as Super Bowl contenders, they have to yeah. make moves first. Yeah, we have to see what their offseason looks like. I think the main pro with Jim Harbaugh is he's going to have a big draft here. So I think that'll be really good. However, how much can you really do when you're locked into a long-term contract with Justin Herbert when we really haven't shown that dog in him, that power to will his team to victory, that power to walk into a franchise and simply turn around a curse where we have not, we have seen that with Jared Goff, who was kind of kicked to the curb. Uh, it was like Toy Story where he just dropped his toys and he didn't want to play with them anymore. And then they just shipped him out in the middle of the night, traded a first round pick to get rid of him. But even he was able to go help Detroit turn around that culture. So can Justin Herbert with Jim Harbaugh kind of flip a switch and then start to engage some of that dog in him to turn around the Chargers franchise. That would be step one. And then I feel like with Jim Harbaugh, he has to come in there and you have to fix that salary cap. I think it's time to move on from Eckler. It's time to move on from Joey Bosa. And he's cost them some playoff wins. I mean, in that Jaguars game, sure, you're getting held every time, but it's throwing a temper tantrum and a 15-yard penalty to lead to the Jags winning that game. A good look when you're making all of this money? No, and you've cost your team games in the past, so he's probably going to get traded there, and he's older. He's been had some injury issues, and then it's time to move off of Khalil Mack, who is one of your best bright spots, but we have to rebuild this team from the draft because we're paying our quarterback all of this money now where we can't afford to have a high-flying defense, so let's bring in all the players from Michigan, and let's bring all the players in from Georgia, Alabama, wherever it is, and I think that was Pete Carroll's big strength coming in to it because he was in that college system um, when he came from Seattle. He had been to a title and him and Pete Carroll are the only coaches who have gotten to a Super Bowl and won a college championship there. So I think that'll be his real advantage. Um, but then it will be how is he going to vibe with that Chargers locker room? And then how is he going to really fill out that roster? And I think like year one, if you get to the divisional round, that's wildly successful but let's make the playoffs first before we jump the ground on the Super Bowl. Yeah, if they can win a playoff game with him, that's I think that's going to be their Super Bowl at this point because they do have a lot of things to address. And everybody that you mentioned that they should move on from, I agree with. They're in salary cap hell. I think they have one of the worst cap situations in the NFL, at least bottom 10. Yeah. And there's a lot of really expensive contracts of aging stars. So if they can get some draft capital and, and hit on some of these draft picks, if they can exceed expectations next year, then they'll probably be 10 and seven and win a playoff game. That's what I suspect them to be at their ceiling. But at their lowest, they're still competing with the Bills and the Dolphins and the Chiefs and the Ravens and the uh, the Bengals who will be back, potentially the Browns if they can recover. The Steelers are always in the mix for some reason. The Texans, the Colts, <laughs> the Jaguars, I guess. Like This is still a loaded AFC. Yeah. You can't just pencil them in. And some of these other teams have way better situations. The Texans, for example, 
all this cap space, rookie contracts everywhere. So I think there's a lot of teams that are in a better position than the Chargers. I will say, this is Justin Herbert's moment. He has his head coach. He's had Brandon Staley. And he's had all these boobs at head coaches. And now he can finally have a real head coach who has succeeded and was successful with Colin Kaepernick and was successful at Stanford and was now successful at Michigan. So where's the excuse now? If he doesn't live up, if he doesn't turn water into wine, then he is overhyped. He is overrated. And we can say that confidently. Yeah, definitely. And I can say that confidently right now because I can't see him currently outdueling CJ Stroud, Joe Burrow, or Patrick Mahomes at this point. And then even someone like Lamar Jackson, you got outdueled by Trevor Lawrence, who woof at this point compared to last season. Then we'll see how good Anthony Richardson is. So 